Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar tonight. Thank you so much for joining us for um, the webinar, Reading Aloud to Improve the Vocabulary and Comprehension Skills of English Language Learners. My name is Nicole Caban, and I am the Education and Training Coordinator for Florida Literacy Coalition, Florida's Adult and Family Literacy Resource Center. Um, this webinar is made possible through the generous support of the Florida Department of Education Division of Career and Adult Education. So before we begin today, I just want to uh, turn your attention to your uh, control panel. So on the right hand uh, side of your screen, you should see Apologies for that, guys. Um, the, um, so the control panel will have a red arrow button on the left-hand side. If you click that, you dock your control panel and get it out of the way. Click it again to bring your control panel back out. Um, then you'll see, also see a hand icon. That's your hand raise icon. So if I ask a question like, how many of you can hear me right now? Raise your hand go ahead and click that button. So who can hear me? Raise your hand. Perfect. Good. All right. Um, next, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to the questions box. The questions box will have, um, will be where you will put in questions for the presenter. The presenter can also ask you questions. Um, in re return, you can answer her questions in the question box. So that should be right in the main panel of your screen. So with that, I would like to go ahead and introduce you to our uh, presenter today. Iris Drunk has been an educator for more than 25 years. She has been both a classroom teacher and a reading specialist in grades K through eight, and currently is a professor of reading at Northwest Florida State College. Iris facilitates uh, reading and study skills trainings and is a strong advocate for using research-based strategies to teach reading comprehension. She's played a role in education as a writer and a speaker for events and conferences um, that focus on reading comprehension and study skills. She's also um, been to a number uh, of our conferences and presented at our conferences as well. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and pass it over to Iris. Iris? Hi, I'm Ira Struntz, and welcome to Reading Aloud to Improve the Vocabulary and Comprehension Skills of the Burton English Language Learners. Uh-oh, something's not working. My slide's not moving. Let's see, let's see that. Oh, there we go. Some of the objectives, again, that you will be able to do. You're gonna facilitate your learners understanding that words on a page are related to pictures and understand that printed words tell a story. It, they also help learners review illustrations in a book and make reasonable guesses about what might happen in the story. You will be able to assist your learners in listening to a simple story, retelling it and talking about it. We're gonna take a short poll so if you will type this in your chat box, in what capacity do you serve emergent English language learners? Are you A, a teacher, B, administrator, C, a volunteer, or D, other? It looks like we've got representatives of many of the areas. Wonderful, wonderful, a good group. While all English language learners are not emergent readers, emergent readers and English language learners may experience many of the same struggles. An emergent reader, regardless of first language, is developing the following concepts. Knowledge that words on a page are related to pictures, Knowledge that printed words tell a story. The ability to look through illustrations in a book and make reasonable guesses about what might happen in the story, that important inference. The ability to listen to a simple story and retell it in his or her own words. And the ability to read a simple story and talk about it. 
This is a graphic representation of oral language and reading strategies and activities. And you see there's quite a few that are available. We are going to focus primarily on the shared guided reading and the reading allows because that seems to be the two areas that are most helpful to our, our uh, learners. You as a person who deals with your learners, if you're a teacher, a, t a tutor, and uh, an, another type that uh, also comes in contact with them and tries to help them administrators, we probably want to identify what it is about teaching reading that you need to know. Do you have a specific goal in mind? What do you already know? Consider this definition. Reading is a complex system of deriving meaning from print that requires all of the following. The skills and knowledge to understand how phonemes or speech sounds are connected to print, the ability to decode unfamiliar words, the ability to read fluently, sufficient background information and vocabulary to foster reading comprehension. The development of appropriate active strategies to construct meaning from print and the development and maintenance of a motivation to read. So let's look at which elements of this definition raise questions in your mind. What topics would you like to learn about? Which of the reading related skills are most appropriate as the focus of instruction for the learners in your class? Do you know which components to work on? Do you know how to as assess student learning reading needs? Do you know how to deal with varied needs in a multi-level setting? All of these are important elements to consider. Another poll. Again, if you will just type it into the chat box. According to research, how many components of reading are there? Is it A7, B5, or C3? Okay, and according to research, there are five components of reading. They are phonemic awareness, decoding, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Each of the first four components plays that important role in facilitating comprehension, which of course is what we are aiming for and what reading is all about. Paralleling the reading component components are the instructional components teaching phonemic awareness, teaching phonics, fluency development, vocabulary development, and the important comprehension strategies instruction. So how do these components work together? Of course, comprehension is the goal of the reading instruction. All of the reading components contribute to that development of comprehension. We also can look at it at another way and group them into two categories, print-based and meaning-based skills. Print skills are going to have phonemic awareness, decoding, and fluency. Meaning skills are going to be the vocabulary and the comprehension. Now, we are not going to focus on the print skills. We're going to focus more on the meaning skills, but I do think it's important for some of you to really understand how all the pieces fit together. So we're going to look quickly at some of the other elements involved. Phonemic awareness. As you know, phonemes are the smallest units making up the spoken language. And English consists of 41 phonemes. Phonemes combine to form syllabus, syllables and words. For example, as you know, the word stop has four phonemes. S, t, a, p, while shop has three. Sh, Phonemic awareness refers to the learner's ability to identify and manipulate these phonemes in spoken words. It's also the understanding that the sounds of spoken language work together to make words. If you look, there are two songs on the screen, the first one in English and the second one in Spanish. They are poems because they rhyme and there's repetition and they're fabulous to teach phonemic awareness. If you'll look at the first one, you see the repetition, and then again in the Spanish. 
So it allows the, your learners to manipulate phonemes as they are kind of enjoying it. Scientifically based research suggests that emergent, that English language learners respond well to meaningful activities such as language games and word walls, especially when the activities are consistent. There is your word, that's your keyword, consistency, and focus on particular sounds and letters. Songs and poems with a rhythm and repetition are easily memorized and then can be used to teach phone phonemic awareness and print concept to English language learners. These rhymes exist in every language and teachers can share these culturally, culturally relevant and teachable rhymes with their classes and build phonemic awareness activities around them. There are, however, some considerations when you instruct English language learners in phonemic awareness. Some phonemes may not be present in your English language learner's native language. And therefore, it becomes difficult for students to produce, pronounce, and distinguish auditorily, as well as to place into a meaningful context. For your English language learners, as with all students, it important, is important that instruction have meaning so that the words and the sounds the students are manipulating are familiar. It's therefore necessary for English language learners to have knowledge of the English vocabulary words within which they are to understand phonemes. Teachers can teach phonemic awareness while also explicitly teaching vocabulary words, their meaning, and their pronunciation to English language learners. English language learners present the opposite profile of adult native speakers with a reading disability. This was an interesting research fact that I learned. They often exhibit stronger word identification abilities and fluency with relative weakness in the meaning-based components. And of course, that does make sense because they are going to have some issues with the vocabulary. What holds them back is a more likely a limited English vocabulary, not a reading disability. These two types of learners may have fairly similar scores on a silent reading comprehension test and even on a test of word recognition, yet have very different strengths and needs. Now, as you are helping your English language learners, you may want to think about ways to facilitate self-study. Provide them books and articles on tape for fluency practice. Encourage them to make word banks or personal dictionaries that they'll take home so they can review vocabulary. Provide copies of stories and articles you've read and discussed to encourage them to reread Encourage your learners to use the text closed caption feature, which allows them to follow the text while hearing the language simultaneously. To the extent possible, be sure that the learners have tools and materials to continue learning outside of class and make sure they know the library. And if their skills allow it, how to use the computers most libraries now have to do available to their patrons. We move on to the next part, which is phonics skills instruction. Again, we're not going to, to dig deeply. We're just going to have a quick over, overview so you can see how all the pieces fit together. Phonics is a way of teaching reading that stresses learning how letters correspond to sounds and how to use this knowledge in reading and spelling through various skills like decoding and blending. Phonics skills are the means to the end of successful reading, a catalyst which triggers the process of learning to read. Phonics should be meaningful and integrated in an integrated part of teaching emergent English language learners. Teaching must build on what students already know so that they can see patterns and draw inferences. And the patterns are vital. As soon as your students start realizing there are patterns, it makes sense to them. They're able to identify those patterns in other materials and it opens up a new world to them. In Spanish, the native language of 77% of English language learners in United States schools, the letters B, C, D, F, L, M, N, P, Q, S, and T represent sounds that are similar enough to English that they may transfer readily to English reading for many students. Consequently, 
the students need minimal phonics instruction for these consonants. In contrast, vowel letters look the same in Spanish and English, but are named differently and represent very different sounds. Therefore, English vowel sounds and their numerous spellings present a challenge to Spanish literate students learning to read English because the one-to-one -one correspondence between the vowel letters and the vowel sounds in Spanish does not hold true in English. There are also considerations when instructing English language learners in phonics. Students who are not literate in their own language or whose language does not have a written form may not understand some concepts and need to be taught about the functions of print. Here are some sample lessons. Again, just as an overview so you can see how things, how the pieces all fit together. I'm not going to go through them because you're go going to get a copy of this PowerPoint, but, but you have phonics picture sorts that are excellent, word sorts, and also the word hunts. So these are areas that you can explore with your, with your learners uh, to help them better learn phonics. Using environmental print to teach emergent readers to read may form a bridge from the known to the new that helps them more readily invoke the entire contents of their knowledge of the printed language and word analysis strategies to read in a variety of new situations and contexts. Your students are out there in their neighborhoods. They see all these different words and they understand. It makes sense. They understand that print is meaningful, that those letters connected to each other are meaningful. I would, as I do in my classroom, label everything so that that way I take index cards and I label the, diff the desks, the blackboard, the curtains, whatever is in there so that, that the, the learners are able to start understanding these words that have meaning and that the, the letters forming together create words that, that have meaning. All students need respect, belonging, challenge, support, purpose, and balance between efforts and success. We all agreed with Dr. Tomlinson, an expert in the field. English learners also need enormous amounts of teacher modeling, enormous amounts, and metacognition, where, as you know, teachers thinking aloud about language use and reading strategies. That's where you let your learners into your brain to see how you figure out different things and concepts. Concepts of print knowledge play a critical role in early reading development. According to the research, learning concepts of print early on influences learners' language development, phonemic awareness, phonics, word reading, and reading writing development. The role of environmental print, using environmental print to teach learners to read, may form a bridge from the known to the new that helps them more readily invoke the entire contents of their knowledge of printed language and world analysis, word analysis strategies to read in a variety of new situations and contexts. So environmental print is a necessary part of helping your learners read better. So what are some of the concepts of print? Word by word matching, understanding first and last concepts, knowing the bottom of the page, left page before right, pointing out the middle, I mean the beginning, the middle, and the end of the book. All these, again, are very important to help your learners read better. There's also basic book knowledge instruction. You as their teacher must model how to read and handle books. You must discuss parts of books and teach concepts of print. The book handling, again, very important. Make sure that your learners know the front of the book, know the book title, know that print contains the author's message, know where to start reading, know which way to go when reading, and then return sweep to the left as they are reading. 
nonfiction texts also must be taught differently, slightly differently to your learners. It's important that they become very comfortable with nonfiction text. As the uh, teacher, use your finger to point to the title and then say to the students, the title is the name of the book. Use your finger to point to the author and say again, the author is the person who wrote the book. Turn to the title page and then say to your learners, the title page is the first page inside the co book cover. Then turn to the table of contents and explain this page tells you what is the book and on what page you will find information. All of this is important to make that learner comfortable with nonfiction text. Take students through a process of dissecting text, call attention to individual words, phrases, and guide them through how each part contributes to the whole. Help direct the student's attention to the print in book. Instructors, you are able to focus on specific parts of including the meaning of print. This includes pointing out specific words within a book and drawing the student's attention to the print. The learners must make that connection that those letters, when they get together, they're put together, create a word, the words become sentences as they are put together, the sentences then become paragraphs, and so then the reading as you're reading through has meaning. The organization of the book and print is important, which includes the understanding the way the pages are read, the role of the author, the print direction. For example, you as their tutor or instructor would say, I'm going to read this page first, and then this page over here next. Or you could say to them, this is the top of the page. This is where I begin reading. And as your students realize what you are saying to them, there's consistency, there's reputation, there will be understanding. Then you would look at the letters, which includes helping the learner know that the letters come in uppercase and lowercase and helping the students learn the names of the letters. For example, you would say to them, this M in the red block is an uppercase letter. See how this uppercase letter is bigger than the lowercase letters? You will use gestures, you will use your facial expressions to help them better understand what you are explaining to them. The words, which include helping the learner recognize some written words and the match between the spoken word and the written word. That's where the aha moment comes in, where your student is able to understand that that written word is equal to that spoken word. For example, you would say to your student, let's point to each word as I read it. Ready? And then you would go ahead and read. Fluency development is vital to comprehension. And again, it's a piece of that oral reading, reading aloud. It's a big part of that. A fluent reader identifies words rapidly, and accurately with little effort and is therefore able to focus, focus on meaning. A fluent reader also interprets while reading to determine appropriate phrasing and expression. And that's where you as the tutor or the teacher must model the phrasing and expression as you read aloud to your students. The aspect of fluency indicates comprehension of the writer's message. If they are able to understand how the, those letters become words, and then the words are incorporated into sentences, and the sentences then have meaning, you're on to that comprehension piece that is so important. Guided, repeated oral reading is a recommended strategy for building fluency in the beginning and developing readers. It is important to help your students become fluent fluent readers. So which, which kind of fluency instruction is most effective? Well, research indicates that guided reading, repeated oral reading may improve one or more aspects of fluency 
as well as comprehension. That is quite important. These approaches call for the learner to read a passage aloud several times with guidance until an acceptable level of fluency is reached at which the reader at which point the reader begins to work on another passage at the same or slightly higher level of difficulty. The guidance that you provide may involve any of the following. Modeling. Absolutely, that is a huge piece of helping your learners become readers. And it can be also using audio tape. Simultaneous reading, assistance and correction, and then combinations of these options. There are oral language activities that are going to be beneficial before, during, or after reading a story in class. Make sure you teach vocabulary words over and over again. It's repetition. That's how that vocabulary will stick. This is a must in order for students to understand what they're reading. Students need to know at least 90 to 95 percent of the words they are reading in order to comprehend a text. You can pre-teach vocabulary by using English as a second language strategies such as role playing, pantomiming, using gestures, showing real objects, pointing to pictures, and doing quick drawings on the board. All of these things will strengthen your vocabulary for your learners. If you notice, I have the picture of the garden tools. So if I were going to have perhaps a nonfiction passage about gardening, I would have pictures of these tools or better yet, bring in the tools and let the students handle them so that they can better remember the vocabulary. Strategies to assist you in the guided repeated oral reading. No one strategy to guided repeated oral reading has been demonstrated to be consistently more, than, more effective than others. So therefore, I have given you several that are very powerful strategies. Reading to the teacher or tutor. The learner reads a brief passage aloud and the teacher or tutor provides help as needed to identify problem words. The teacher may also ask a couple of recall questions after the reading or ask the student to retell the passage in his or her own words. It could also be done with uh, more than just one student reading that passage. We'll see that in a few minutes. Then the leader, then the learner reads the passage aloud again one or more times, continuing until he or she can read it comfortably with few errors and can recall facts and details accurately and retell the passage in his or her own words. That retelling piece is very powerful. If your learner is able to retell that passage, without any difficulty, there's comprehension. And that's what you want, is that comprehension piece. Uh, think about when the last time you went to a movie and it was so good that you decided you had to have your friends go. You needed to get them excited about it. You then went ahead and explained the movie up to a point if you didn't want them to know the ending. So that that way, they knew there was a beginning, a middle, an end. It all made sense. And that's exactly what happens when your learners start putting these together and are able to retell that passage in his or own, her own words. By engaging the reader in discussion, asking comprehension questions after each reading, and asking the learner to retell the passage in his or her own words, the teacher maintains a focus on meaning and demonstrates to the learner that rereading not only increases accuracy, accuracy, but also results in better comprehension. When fluency is achieved with one passage, the learner begins working on another one. In a slight variation on approach, the teacher begins the session by reading the passage aloud 
before asking the student to read. That's the way I like to begin my sessions. When I read first, because I want them to understand the phrasing and the expression that I use as I move through the passage. And that's what I want to hear from them as they start reading aloud. Echo reading. The teacher or the tutor reads a sentence aloud and the learner reads the same sentence immediately afterward, imitating the teacher's phrasing. Once again, you could have several students doing this with you. You read and then they respond reading the same sentence aloud, imitating the phrasing. They proceed through the text this way. Then the learner may attempt to rereading re the text aloud independently or to each other if you have a group of students. As an alternative, echo reading may be used as an additional level of support during other guided reading, repeated reading procedures. For instance, when the learner finishes reading a passage aloud, you, the teacher, may use echo reading with selected phrases or sentences that were somewhat challenging for that learner. Dyad and choral reading. In dyad reading, the teacher or the tutor and the learner read the passage or the story aloud together in unison. At any point, if the learner is reading comfortably, he or she may offer to read alone, or the teacher may just simply stop reading. That's usually what I do is just stop and let the student go ahead and, re and read, continue reading. If the learner begins to struggle or miscalls one or more words that have significance for the meaning of the passage, you jump right back in, the teacher resume, resumes reading. The teacher's role is to provide a model for fluent, expressive reading and to provide any words the learner can't identify very quickly. They might practice this way for a few minutes during each class meeting, continuing to reread the passage until the learner is reading accurately and smoothly, perhaps to a predetermined standard for, for word errors, miscues, and or a particular reading speed. They would then begin working on another passage, gradually increasing the readability level of the material. The teacher may also ask comprehension questions after each reading. And in, in choral reading, the group of learners reads aloud in unison. As uh, the teacher asks comprehension questions, also think about the retelling aspect. Have the learner retell that passage, and that is going to, again, help with that comprehension. Then there's paired or partner reading. Pairs of learners take turns reading and rereading the same passage to each other, or they read aloud together, as in the dyad reading that we just looked at. Learners may be similar in reading fluency, or one may be deliberately paired with a better reader, so that person can provide assistance. Then there's tape-assisted reading. using. It's very easy now to using tape readings. A learner is able to work more independently, reading along, while listening to the passage on tape. This could be done during class or at home. It's a great activity for your learners to, to get the practice at home. Sometimes the learner is instructed to listen and read the passage a number of times, usually at, at least three. Alternatively, the direction might be to reread aloud until the, the learner feels able to read the passage accurately and comfortably. The teacher might use commercial books on tape or make recordings of texts or authentic materials. This is a lesson. I'm not going to go through it. You can go ahead and get that when you get the PowerPoint. This is the echo reading activity, the directions for it. And this is for the paired re repeated reading. Now we're looking at that important piece, vocabulary. Vocabulary development refers to the knowledge of that stored information about meanings and pronunciation of words necessary for communication. Vocabulary development is important for the beginning reader in that when a student comes to a word and sounds it out, he or she is also determining if the word makes sense 
based on his or her understanding of the word. That's why the vocabulary piece is so important to comprehension. If a student does not know the meaning of the word, there is no way to check if the word fits or if the meaning is making sense in the sentence. Vocabulary development is also a primary determinant of reading comprehension. That just makes sense completely. Readers cannot understand the content of what they are reading unless they understand the meaning of the majority of words in that passage or, or text. Vocabulary development is one of the greatest challenges to reading instruction for English language learners, because in order to read fluently and comprehend what is written, students need to use not just phon phonics, but context. It is possible for students to read completely phonetically and not comprehend what they have read because they do not have the vocabulary. Therefore, vocabulary needs to be taught explicitly and be a part of the daily curriculum in addition to learning to read. It is extremely important for educators of English language learners to know and incorporate the ways that students learn vocabulary directly. And that includes explicitly teaching vocabulary words before the students read a text how to use the dictionaries, how to use prefixes and suffixes to decipher word meanings, and how to use context clues. All of these enable your learners to become better readers and improve their comprehension. Here is a vocabulary lesson. We're not going to go completely through it, but again, you're going to use a short excerpt from the text possibly listen to an audio tape of the text, and then have the students identify vocabulary words that are unknown or challenging for them. You can pair them or put them in groups to do this. You can do them all together with you as the guide. That's up to you how you structure it. Direct instruction is important, and it, it is uh, very helpful in for the students to learn content as they are adding to their vocabulary. Students identify personal words in addition to the academic words that you are providing as their teacher or their tutor. All words are added to a student's vocabulary notebook. And this is what you want them to do. Write the word in English, write the word in their native language, identify cognates, write a definition of the word in your own words, draw a picture of the word, or use an icon that will aid memory. Uh, now that we have computers, I uh, get a lot of the images off the computer. And then they should write or draw what the word is not. It's all these different ways that they act interact with that vocabulary word to help them better learn it and remember it. It's ongoing and they work until you under, they, they show you understanding of that vocabulary word, uh, whatever criteria you have developed for them. I use index cards a lot where instead of keeping an actual vocabulary notebook, it's done with a ring so that I punch a hole in the, the index card and they have the index card with all the uh, instructions, writing the word in English, writing the word in the native language, the cognates, the definition, and all that. So that way they can flip through their ring. And it's uh, also having that movement that we know is so important, a different way of uh, studying that vocabulary. Many Spanish and English words do have the Latin and Greek roots, and they also have the same meaning that uh, these words are called cognates. And I have given you a link that you can go ahead and click into that and it will give you a list of Spanish and English cognates to help, help your students. Another strategy to nourish both concepts and language proficiency is, embedded, is the embedded use of the following procedures. Manipulatives, realia, visuals, repetition, very important, repetition, clear articulation, eye contact, gestures, pantomime, body movement, high frequency vocabulary, the reduction of idioms because they won't make sense to your students. 
Use of cognates, description through synonyms and preview the content, always preview the content. So all of these things will help you better teach your students the necessary vocabulary they must have. The picture walk. This is an excellent way of introducing a particular book or text to your students. They look at the pictures and go through and put the pictures together and they're able to understand what that book or passage is going to be about. They use inferences. They are able to make those important connections. This picture walk, which is real easy to do with your students, uh, is, is vital for them to have that necessary understanding. The picture walk builds interest in the story. And again, it sets up those expectations about what is to come, the inferences. It reinforces the strategy of relying on visual cue, cues while reading. And as you know from the latest research, that visual information is vital to understanding. It adds that extra, extra layer to comprehension. So it can be used for reading aloud, shared reading, or helping that, that it says child, but we know it's our learners to read independently. When you help a student and engage a student in a picture walk, you read through the pages of the book without reading the words. And again, why is it important to do this? It activates prior knowledge about the subject matter. It helps your, your learners become familiar with that story. It presents and discusses new vocabulary words. And then there are some questions that you can use as you conduct that picture walk. You can again look at the front cover, ask your students what do you think this story is about, and then turn the page, what do you see, what's happening. All of this guides your students through that book. So nonfiction, very important. How, how are you going to help your students get into the nonfiction text? Again, take a book walk. And this way, they're going to be able to make predictions about unfamiliar non nonfiction texts before they actually have to read it. By looking closely together at the front, the back cover, the index, the table of contents, the glossary, the photographs or images, your students can start to get a sense about the topic of the passage or the book. This scanning and skimming helps set the expectation for the reading. So again, take time to walk your readers through that book before they start reading. Games and singing and other activities, these literacy games activities help your students learn the informal language that accompanies game playing while reinforcing specific skills. Learners have fun while they learn through verbal exchange. That I, I love to see the students connecting with each other while we are doing some kind of uh, rep repetition in a game or uh, a, a poetry reading. They are having fun doing it. They have the facial expressions, show that they're having a good time, the way that they interact with each other. It's wonderful. These activities involve small groups and they help the students feel more comfortable with their peers. Some of the ideas would be provide a fun, concrete method of learning new vocabulary by bringing those objects into your sessions. Choose objects representing basic vocabulary words or particular words from a book that you are going to read or you are currently reading. Play simple games to support the development of these various skills. Sing songs, recite poetry to practice the pronunciation and, and increase your students' fluency. This is synchromesh. And that just means that your learner has the ability to finger point, read a sentence, and then go back and identify target words within the sentence. This I'm sure you're familiar with. Your student would go ahead and read one, two, buckle my shoe, and then you would ask them to point to the word shoe. 
and you would mix it up by picking different words. And it's fun because, again, it's kind of a nonsense type of um, uh, piece of passage that, that is fun. Read alouds. I cannot tell you how important read alouds are for your students. The read alouds are important because they allow your students to use that phrasing and expression that will help them understand the passages better. We read to students for all the same reasons we talk to children, to reassure, to entertain them, to bond, to inform, to explain, to arouse curiosity, and to inspire them. And all those things will help them be more motivated to read and will think that the reading is a pleasure, something that they want to, to do. But in reading aloud, we also condition the student's brain to associate reading with pleasure, create background knowledge, build vocabulary, and provide a reading role model. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this book. It's called The Tortilla Factory. It's a simple book. It's by Gary Paulson. The pictures are absolutely lovely. An emergent reader's class of English language learners is about to engage in a lesson in which they sequence events in a story. The teacher chooses to use the book, The Tortilla Factory by Gary Paulson, which recounts the steps in making tortillas. To begin the lesson, the teacher shows students a bag of tortillas and asks them to show by thumbs up who has eaten tortillas, helped make tortillas, knows what ingredients go into making tortillas, can show motions for types of ways to manipulate the dough. The teacher prompts students to name key vocabulary as she writes these words on index cards placed on the board. Dough, corn, plants, kernels, ground, grind, bake, factory. Either the teacher or a student then explains each word. I'm going to try to show you a little bit of the book inside the book, if this will work. And so you can see, uh, see uh, how lovely the book is. There we go. There we go. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful book to read and reread. And you notice, see, the pictures are lovely. And then the, it's simple. You don't have a lot of print on the pages. So that way, the students aren't going to be overwhelmed. They'll, they'll be, you'll be able to move through the book and have them practice that um, expression uh, that I'm you sorry want. to interrupt. Uh, Iris, we're not actually seeing the book. I think a lot of people are having trouble seeing it. Oh no, they can't see anything. Um, we can see the the slides, but not the book that you were referring to, not the video. Okay, I am so sorry. I don't know why. It's probably something to do with my computer. Um, we'll go ahead and just move on to the next one. I'm so sorry. And hopefully, it will work when you uh, get the PowerPoint. And you're able to to see it because it is a fabulous uh, book that um, is well worth going through and I don't know how to get out of it now. Just a second. Let me see if I can get rid of it. And it's a simple book, but yet okay, why isn't it not moving? You should it's be able not. to click back into your uh PowerPoint. That's what I'm trying to do, yeah, but it's not meant me go anywhere. It's probably my oops, wait a minute. There we go. There we go. Here we are. I think I can get back now. Yep. Yep. Okay. There we go. So we're back. Sorry about that, but you'll be able to, I hope, get into it when you uh, are looking at the PowerPoint yourself. Technology. I love it. And then there's problems. Before reading the Tortilla Factory aloud, then you have these words that are on the index cards that are given to the pairs of students. And again, while you are reading the, the book aloud with your expression, your phrasing that you are modeling, 
the pairs hold up the words and or model emotions that go with the vocabulary for each part of the tortilla making process that's detailed in the books. The next thing I want to show you, I love, love, love this, this particular site because it's free and they have the amazing catalog of these passages that you can use with your English language learners. This one is one of the ones I just pulled up and it's the amazing world of bats. It's a fabulous, fabulous passage to use for a read aloud. So you see it's simple and it's got pictures that go along with it. So the students would be reading again, it'd be a, a read aloud. Bats are interesting creatures, bats are shy and gentle animals. You see some of the words that perhaps they will need to have clarified. There's the sentence structure leading one sentence into the next. Bats are night animals, it continues. Is that me? <laughs> and then the creature is the one of the words that they would have to learn as a vocabulary. Is that part of our, do you hear that music? I do, I'm not sure where it's coming from. I don't either know where it's coming from. I, I'm muted, so it, it well, I was muted, so I think it might be coming from you. It's, it's pretty faint, though. Oh, is it faint? Because it's loud here. I don't know. I, don't... I am so sorry. I don't know where that music is coming from. We're almost finished. It's, it's okay. So the, you have your definition, your, your vocabulary word. It not only is shown to you, it has the definition, images, the cognate. It also has a vocabulary activity that could be used. And then it has, it even pronounces the word for you. Finally, this is it. This is the, the site that you want to go to, readworks.org. You sign up for uh, the information, all the passages, and it's free, free content. Absolutely free for kindergarten to 12th grade. This is what it looks like in one of the the areas where you can get into to choose your passages and they're they're varied they give you the grade level and it's just it's phenomenal what this site has i recommend you getting into it it's free it's you can't lose anything and i want to now finish up with reading aloud is one of the most important things teachers can do with emergent english language learners Reading aloud builds many important foundational skills, introduces vocabulary, provides a model of fluent, expressive reading, and helps the, your students recognize what reading for pleasure is all about. We all want to build a culture to value all language learners. We all believe in that, and I know we're doing that. I am Iris Trunce, and I thank you for attending this webinar. Are there any questions? Not seeing any questions in the question box here. If anyone, um, I do. I, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and, and type it in now. Um, Iris, I would also like to mention that the California Library Literacy Services has some fantastic video resources on reading, specifically. Um, they have a uh, reading one-on-one -on -one with a tutor and learner, um, and they do they go through each part of reading, and um, it's they're just fantastic videos. So I can send you that link as well. Yes, that Which, would be wonderful. Yes, um, uh, and and I, I see you asked. Yes, it was. It's California Library Literacy Services, uh, uh, services, not resources. Um, I can send you guys the link. The last time I tried it, it wasn't working, but we mm -hmm. have, we actually have some of those video files um, uh, on our online tutor training course. So I could always just, if we can't get those, that link to work, I can just send send you guys the link to the online tutor training course. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and type it in the chat box. Okay. Um, any other? 
Any other questions? Um, Iris, we have um, one question here. Um, do all these strategies work as well for adult ELLs? Yes, absolutely. That I just teach the adults. And yes, absolutely they do. Even with the, that tortilla book, that, that still, I use that with the adults and they love it. So yes, absolutely these strategies are for adults. I don't know um, where the music is. So someone's having trouble finding the Tortilla Factory book, but um, uh, the the link will uh, the link for the the sample of it should, will be in the PowerPoint. Um, Correct. Uh, and and if I find it, I'll also just send you the link straight to the book. Um, do you think it's it's probably they someone probably sells it? I assume. Oh, Amazon has it. Yeah, that's where I, I got the copies, Amazon. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so I went ahead and, and put in the name of the the um, place that has the videos. You just want to kind of put it in Google. Um, like I said, I was having trouble recently um, getting it, um, but uh, I, I think we have some video files on our online tutor training course that I could send you guys if we're having trouble. Um, okay. let's see, uh, we, yes, we will be posting this, uh, PowerPoint on YouTube. So we'll probably get that up tomorrow. Um, the video, I mean, um, all right. And if that's all, um, I'd like, Iris, do you have anything else you need to add? No, thank you so much for attending. I hope there is something that you could take away and try with your learners yes absolutely um so thank you all for joining us I, i'm going to send a, a follow-up email to all of you tomorrow um you will have in it your certificate of completion and um so that you can take it to uh whoever you need to in order to get some um credit for it um i will also send around a, a survey the surveys are really important for us uh, we use your feedback uh, to improve the quality of our offerings. So please, please, please do those surveys. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, thank you all for coming and have a wonderful uh, rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.